our notes have an origin and a destination. And like you said, no, the no. And notes don't have origin and a destination. The arrows have the or the the origin and the destination. Correct. Okay, sorry. And then you said the these origins and, and destinations can be indirect or direct. And when, and you, when make, and you make it clearer, what can be direct or indirect? So these um, the arrows can be indirect or direct. Meaning, if it's indirect, hold it's on a minute. Hold on a minute. What is my note keeper here? I don't see my note keeper in class. Now she's coming. Isabel, what is direct and indirect? Sorry, Professor. Um, direct is when the note, the arcs go to, go to the next one. And the indirect is when they can go back and forth to different notes. Yeah. Kind of. Can I have it the, from someone in a clearer way? Professor, professor can, I can I say something? No, no, Esther. You're oh. the queen. You go to the queen at the end. Kadisha, can you tell me what is direct and indirect? You are the princess. You go professor, first. I'm pretty sure that we're all queens and kings in here. <laughs> no, there is only one I king. disagree. There is only I one disagree. queen. There are a lot of princes and there are a lot of other people who are like me. Well, who I am. Queen. No, I don't know. I don't know. Direct, I'm a rebel. I'm a rebel. So, Kadisha, what is direct and what is indirect? In this case or in, generally? If it's in this case, it's generally. If it's general, it's going to be in this case. A model with the, with the with the model with the nodes, right? Correct. Um, direct is the supply or the known? No, I want that clear. Professor, can I finish the um the review? Yeah, I'm listening. Okay, perfect. So direct is when you're using minimal amounts of nodes. So just one to two is direct. You can only go from one node to one node. Indirect when you can go. Good, good, yes, good, 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 good. You, to you told me right. Now I want to have an example. Okay, if example want, of direct is one to I two. I want to go from one to four. How so many one to four different is indirect. Ways? It's indirect. Good. How many different ways I can go indirectly from one to four? You could. You can go one through one to two, from two to four, or you can go from one to three, from three to four, or you can go from one to two, to two to three, to three to four, or one to two, to two. No, that's it. That's it. Sorry. Can I go from one to two, from two to three, from three to one, from one to three, and from three to four? Mm, yes. So wait. Yes. yes, you can. Professor Elijah. Yes. Um, yes. So if it's if it's from one node to the next, it's direct. But if you skip in over one, it's indirect. Like I'm yes. a little so confused. That if you skip one, it's indirect. Yeah. So, yeah. So once if it takes one step to get to that next node, that's direct. So that one to two, or that two, to, or that one to three, or three to four. But when it's like one to four, or one to five, or or vice versa, five to one, or four to one. That's indirect because it's going to take more hours to get there than gotcha. versus I, one, I, one train. Gotcha. Now, Kadisha, now, Kadisha, I want you to tell me if you've got it. If I want to go from one to three, what kind of alternatives do I want to have from one to three? How um, can you go from one to three? Can you give me all the possible ways that I can go from one to three? I mean, you can jump from one to two and then go from two to three. That's one. That's indirect. I'm using okay. two as stepping stone in between. I want to go from one to three. From one to three, I can go directly from one to three. And then I want you to figure out all possible other ways that I can go from one to three. 
besides going straight. Um, from two to three, all other possible ways. Um, from you can go from four to five. I want to go exactly. from one from one to three. I want you to tell me all the possible paths, and that's that's the term that I want to use when we talk about connections. We want to find paths, and I have a direct path and indirect path. So I want to go from one to three. The direct path is to go straight. And I want to tell me all the possible other options that I can go from one to three. How many do I have? Three? I don't want you to tell me three, four, or oh. five. I want you to tell me from one to three. How do you go from one to three? From one to two to two to three? That's one. Do I have another option? Yeah, isn't that one to three arrow? Yeah, but that's, that's a direct option. The that's last direct. option. I wanted to, to, to know the indirect option. You want indirect yeah. options? Indirect, and you told, right? indirect. And you told me one. From one you go to two, from two you go to three. Do I have any other? Okay. Can we go from three to one? Yeah, but I want to go from one to three. Any other way is to go from one to three. Right. Professor, sure. we can go from one to two, two to four, four back to two to three. Correct. Do I have any other oh, way? Oh, okay. You, you can do one to two, two to four, <laughs> four to five, five to three, and three back to one. Correct. Then I make a circle. But in doing that, I may be lost in a circle somewhere on that particular case and not be able to go to my last point. You don't see it here. What I want is I want to play with <laughs> art and no, what is that? Art is where an activity is happening. What is known? What the activity is connected? I will go on and use an example. I take the map. I don't want you to have this map. I want you to see this map in my computer. I want you to go to Google Maps. If you go to Google Maps, how many ways you have to connect these points. What do you have here? You have a map and a model. You have the places in a given space, in a given point in the map. What do you have? You have factories and you have warehouses. What do you want to do? You want to make the connection from a factory the warehouse. If you don't look at your Google map from Des Moines to Albuquerque, there is only one connection. Is the only connection or not? And I want you to go to Google Maps. <laughs> And you go to Google Maps. I go to Google. I see what is happening with Google Maps. I see a Google Map here. I take the Google Map and I put it to the right perspective. And what I see here is highways. I take some time and this is too much. This is what I want. I see highways. Do you see the moist here? Do you see the moist here? 
You see, the moist here. The moist yes. is magnet. The moist here in Iowa. The moist is connected to many other places. And as the moist is connected to many other places, you can go from the moist here to Cleveland here is only one way to go or more than one ways to go more than one and this is what i want you to be able to see when i make the model i said that i have one way when i look at the reality i have more than one ways and when you deal with business this is what i want you to know i want you to know more than one ways if i want to ship things from des moines to cleveland how many different ways I want to, I have to make the shipments, Damien. I can put a truck from here and I drive it all the way here. I, right. can, go, I can go through Chicago or I can pass Chicago. And I can use the highways. Jerry said, why don't you use trains? And I can take on and look at the train system. And Robert said, why don't you use airplanes? And you can go directly. One thing I cannot be able to use here is shipping. But when I have to transfer things from one place to the other, I can use different modes of transportation. And different modes of transportation allow me to ship different quantities in different costs. Because the higher the quantity, the lower the cost per unit. But also, I want to think different objectives. Do I want to have things shipped as inexpensive as possible or as fast as possible? And, yes. if, I want, and if I want to reduce cost, I can do it by increasing the quantities I transfer. Then train is a solution. Or boats, if I have the option. But if I want to move things fast, then airplanes is a solution. And one of the important things that this type of models assume, and we have to work as implicit information, something that is given to you and you work on, is what happens with the connections and how you calculate the cost per unit of that particular connection. Is this clear, Francisco? Francisco, is this yes, clear? Good, I want to see your face. Muffle. Okay. And this is one thing that is important. I don't want to be bothered with this. Now I will make my life simple. I will assume that I will know all these options in my connections. And I will simplify the case. I want to relate every factory with every warehouse. And I want mainly to make certain decisions. One of the decisions that I want to make is to have the lowest possible cost. But if I have the lowest possible cost, I need to look at what is happening with the demand and what is happening with the supply. And the supply is defined by the capacity that each one of the factory has. And each one of the factory has a maximum capacity. Like you and me working every day, 
we have a limitation of our capacity. What is this limitation? Esther can work 15 hours a day. Is it making sense to work 15 hours a day? Esther can take six classes per semester. Does it make sense to take six classes per semester? Or not? Uh, not necessarily if she's trying to, uh, as you were saying before, you know, work on her GPA by taking six, you know, she's going to spend a lot more time trying to get through it faster, but at the cost of possibly having like a lower GPA. But if Esther goes from BMCC to Baruch and Baruch takes her with 4.0 or with 3.5 or with 3.2 or with 2.9 and she goes to Baruch and the BMCC's grade point average is completely irrelevant for Baruch. She starts from the scratch. Then Esther, what she wants to do, she wants to get 4.0 at BMCC, or she wants to go to Baruch a semester or a year earlier. And that's Esther's choice. And not only she has a choice, but she can be able to change that choice and move on. So let's see what do we want to think as a requirement for modeling. I want to think about the demand and I want to think about the supply. But the demand can go up and down. And supply can increase up to a given limit. And you cannot be able to increase the supply more than what you have. As a result, I put the idea of balancing. And in this case, I have the overall balancing situation. So balance means everything that I demand, I supply. Everything that I supply, I demand. And right now, there is a product that we use it and that product, we do not have really efficient way to store it. As a result, we need to produce as much as we demand. And we cannot produce more than the demand because we cannot store it efficiently. And that is electricity. But we have other products that we can be able to store it. We can be able to have it and use it upon demand. And when we have businesses, we can be able to look at inventory process and inventory management. In the old days, we didn't have good transportation systems and we wanted to have a lot of inventories. Now, we don't want to keep things in inventories. In the old days, I wanted to have a lot of books, but now I can have electronic books. So I don't want to have the physical books. In the old days, in order to have a book, I need to buy it. Now I can have it in electronic book from the electronic library delivered to me whenever I need it. I start changing my management system using the just-in-time management. And just-in-time management means something that comes up from this type of a modeling. Instead of having inventories that they take space and that are costly to require to have things whenever I need it and not have it in advance. As students, you do that all the time. And as a professor, I'm really pissed off when you do it. What do you do? Instead of knowing something, anytime I ask for something, you go on and you Google it. Why you Google it? Because you can find the answer. And you don't need to put it in your memory. Why do I want you to know it? because at given points, 
you may not be able to go on and Google it. And you really need to know it. And all these problems are coming up here. The main idea is to start with a balanced problem. All of the books are talking about the balanced problem, but none of them is talking about what is happening if you have imbalance, what kind of imbalances we have, and what problems the imbalancing is possessing. And I'm starting from what I have here. The supply units are 700. The demand units are 700. If the problem is balanced, everybody gets whatever everybody supplies. And everybody is happy at the end. But if I have non-balanced situation, then I want to see how that distribution is happening who is gaining and who is losing and why the distribution is happening that particular time. This is what I want to clarify today. Is this clear? And I go on to review what I had yesterday. Yesterday I said that this information is the starting point, the cost per unit. And if you are taking a class, they will give it to you. But if you go on and you work, you have to know how to calculate it. And that is going to be common sense. What I would like you to do is I would like you to focus on the cost per unit and be able to make a nice graph using Excel. So you know what is happening with the cost per unit. I want your explanation on what is happening to be in terms of whatever you see here. And one of the things that I would like you to do is I would like you to make that type of a visual presentation graph using your Excel. <coughs> I would love to know how I will do that with Mathematica. So far, I didn't figure it out. And I don't have time to go on and do it. I know that some of my students are better than me and they will do it for me. And I move on. And I want to have different other alternatives. This is what I did yesterday. I move out of what I did yesterday. And I go to what I have today. And today, I'm moving further up from whatever I finished yesterday. Step one, I have a problem. And what I ask you is I want each one of you to be able to tell me everything that this problem possesses. And in doing that, we have two different ways to do it. One is explicitly, I want to know what this numerical information says to me. And I want you to tell me all the information without missing anything. But besides that, I said that it is an implicit information. And if you know all these numbers, I want you to tell me something else that the book does not explain, does not give. But if you use all these numbers, you can be able to tell me like what? That the total production is 700 units and the total demand is 700 units. That means that all the transported units are as much as you produce and as much as you use, you demand. The problem is balanced. What else do I want to know? I want to know what is happening with the cost. And these are the numbers that define the cost. 
and I want to know, do I have any shipment at the highest cost? And how much is that and why? Or do I have any shipments at the lowest cost? And why is that happening? And these type of problems were solved before computers. And when we deal with this type of problems, we look at one step at a time and we go through a process. The thinking process and the computing process more or less is the same. And I want to know what is going to happen. So if you have to have a distribution like this, what do you want to do? You need to focus on the objective. If the objective is that you want to have the lowest cost, you want to see what is the lowest points that you need to have there. I go into my lecture that I had yesterday and I take that part from here that I made it and I bring it here. This is the graph that says what is happening with all of my costs and it gives an explanation are the numbers that I have here correct and the numbers can be seen as row wise row wise numbers is what is happening if things are going to Cleveland from the three different factories and if they go to Cleveland from these different factories, this is the case that I have. I go row wise and column wise. And I want to see what is going on from Des Moines. From Des Moines, things are moved to Cleveland, Boston, and Albuquerque. Do I have the correct information here? From Des Moines, they go to Cleveland, Boston, and Albuquerque. From Des Moines, they go to Cleveland, Boston, and Albuquerque. Do I have the numbers that correspond one to the other? Um, no, Professor. And Damian is right. No. And I want you to be able to say, if there is a slight variation of the cost, does it give me any difference of the transportation or not? Because what we can be able to do, and this is what I want to do, is the cost numbers, the cost coefficients can alter and can alter because of different facts in business. And what are the different facts in business? Damian wants to compete with me. And he wants to take business away from me when he deals with one of you, when he deals with Francisco. If Damian wants to compete with me, he's going to give different deals to the customer expecting to get different alternative that's one thing second thing when i model i need to model every single supplier and we said because we were thinking in terms of accounting and not in terms of mathematics whenever we had to put supply that means provide, that means give, that means I don't have any more. We were putting a negative number. But this is not something that we actually require. Because Robert, he went and he studied math, algebra, after he studied accounting. And Robert says, if you have a negative number here, and if you have a negative number here, it is equivalent if you change the case 
and if you treat it as positive numbers. And if the supply is negative, or if the supply is positive, the solution that I will get is the same. And here I gave it to you and you have it. I don't want you to trust anything. You put shift tender, you see that is happening and you have output one, I solved something here. What do I have? I have a solution. I take the same problem again. And if I take the sub same problem, I change from negative to positive the supply line. Because I don't trust what my professor said. And I don't trust Robert that this is what you get from math. I solve it again. And I have another solution. I want to take this solution and put it together with the previous solution. And I want to compare one and the other. Do I get the same solution with positive supply or with a negative supply? And as I look at it, as I look at it, Francisco says, yeah, you get the same stuff. What do I get? I see that from the Moise, I see from the Moise to Alpakerki, I ship 10 units. Nothing else is shipped from the Moise. I see from Evansville to Alpakerki, nothing is happening. And 200 units go to Boston and 200 units go to Cleveland. So from Evansville, I ship to Boston and Cleveland. And from Fort Lauderdale, I ship to Alpacerki and to Cleveland. In both ways, doesn't matter if it's supplied positive or negative, I get the same shipments and I get the same cost. Is this cost right? And Kadisa says, Professor, I don't have Mathematica with me, but before I take your word for, excuse my attitude, but I doubt you. And I want everybody to doubt everything, myself included. And I want Kadisa to validate the cost. She goes up here and she sees what is the cost. So what do we have? Now we calculated. We have 100 units shipped from Des Moines to Alpacerki. The cost per unit is five. And I move on. I'm done with this cost of unit. Then I go here from Evansville, I have 200 units, but they moved to Boston. From Evansville to Boston, the cost per unit is four. But from Evansville, I have other 100 units that they move to Cleveland. From Cleveland, the cost per unit is three. And I have the last case from Fort Lauderdale. From Fort Lauderdale, I have 200 units, but they move to Alpacerki. The cost per unit is nine. And I have other 100 units, but from Fort Lauderdale, they move to Cleveland. And the Fort Lauderdale from Alpacerki to Cleveland is five. I made a mistake. If I put the space and I put five, I have everything done. But this says, this is what is shipped. How much is cost? I need to do the calculation. Mathematica gives me the cost here. This is the cost that I have. And I would never ask a question to tell me what is the cost. 
because the damn computer is going to do it. But I will ask everybody a question, why do I have these shipments? Why do I have these shipments? Why do I ship something with the most expensive cost in order to get the overall lowest cost? And the answer is simple. You take what is the solution, you take what is the solution, and you look at your cost. And you take these cost numbers and you make a comparison and you make a logical process what you actually do. One easy way to do it is if I present things in a form, let me send that professor a message. And I want to know why I go on through this case. I'm giving you something now that you can be able to do. In Mathematica, if you use a command table form, you can be able to have a table for whatever you want. And this is the way you can have a table. I want to make a table. I need to know what is the dimensions of the table. And I want in the table to put a description how that table described. If I put shift under this one, this is what I can get. And this is something I can take and I can be able to go on and present it. It says what kind of a shipment I have. If I don't want to put something here, I would leave that empty. I take it and I do it again. If I don't want to have anything here, I leave that space empty between these two commas. If I don't want to have anything here, I would leave it empty between these two commas. If I don't want to have anything here, I would leave that empty between these two commas. I do it again. And whenever I don't have anything, it gives me null. And whenever I have a shipment, I have a shipment. And I have a question. And my question is, why do I have this particular case? And I want to take that particular information. I go up here that I see the numbers. And now I want to put the specific information, the cost per unit that I use. Now that I have it from here, I will go further down and I will put it in this case. I run it. I run it and I have the cost per unit. I take the cost per unit next to the shipments and I want to look for these two different cases, light brown. And I want you to give me an explanation. This is the shipment cost, and this is the shipments. Why the computer selected this choice? 
And if you didn't have a computer, and I'm glad that Kandisha does not have a computer, and the problem is small, and Kandisha can deal with the same small number, but she doesn't have a computer. Can Kandisha tell me why we end up having these shipments? And Kandisha starts thinking, and she takes shipments from Des Moines. From Des Moines, they can go to this case here. Why we ship to Alpacerti and not to Boston and not to Cleveland? Isn't it cheaper to sleep ship to Boston and Cleveland? And Kadisa would say, let's look at the alternatives. And if I look at the Evansville shipping to Boston and Cleveland, I see something that is important. And she does relative comparisons. And this is what the computer does, relative comparisons. You ship from Des Moines and you ship from Evansville. What do you see? You see that the difference is the shipment to Albuquerque. While the cost to Boston and Cleveland is the same. Therefore, what do you want to do? You want to ship as inexpensive as possible. Because of this, comparative to this, you will make a decision what is going to go to Albuquerque. What do you want to do? You want to ship to Albuquerque with the lowest cost. The lowest cost going to Albuquerque is the choice between five, eight, and nine. From where do you want to get things in Albuquerque? From the cheapest one. We take it, we mark it. This is what we want to have. So what do you want from Des Moines to Albuquerque? We ship 100 units. Why 100 units is the question. We go to supply and demand. Why 100 units from Des Moines to Albuquerque? Des Moines can produce 100 units. <coughs> but Albuquerque wants 300 units. If Alpacerki wants 300 units, wants to get a fraction of that as inexpensive as possible, which means it can get it from Des Moines. But as Des Moines ships 100 units to Alpacerki, doesn't have anything else to ship. Then my question is, Alpacerki needs 300 units from where it gets the rest. And I don't have a computer to solve the computer. Kadisa is operating the way I operated 35 years ago with no computer, but I wanted to solve the problem. And I have to think. I go on and I look at my data from where Alpacerki gets the rest of the case <clears throat> from the most inexpensive cases that we have. Alpacerki gets it from Fort Lauderdale, but that's the most expensive. Why gets it from the most expensive? Why gets it from the least expensive and the most expensive? Is any reason? And Kadisa doesn't have a computer, but she has a reason. She says, yes, because we go on and look at the whole picture, and that gives me the only alternative that remains. Because we go on and we see what is happening with Boston and what is happening with Cleveland. 
Boston needs 200 units. Cleveland needs 200 units, but Cleveland cannot be able to get it from one source. It gets it from two sources. Boston gets it from one source. Arupakerke can get it from two sources. Is any reason that the computer is giving me this answer that I get here? Yes. And the reason is we look at the entire problem and we want to have the lowest cost. Can I get the same solution without using the computer? Kadisa says yes. But you need me a little bit more time so I can think about it. Why do I need the computer then? So she can do the computer decision very fast. What do we lose in the process? People start using the computer and stop thinking. What do I want you to do? I want you to think as you use the computer. Because if you think as you use your computer, I want you to justify the solution that you get from here. And if you justify the solution you get from here, then I want you to be able to present it in a nice and easy way. So you can put that information into your PowerPoint and talk. If I ask you to make a presentation, I don't want Esther to give me the code. That's her business. I don't want Esther to tell me that she solved the problem with Excel or with Mathematica, with Lindo or with Maple. That's her business to solve the problem any way that she's capable of solving it or not solving. I want to know what is the solution and I want to know the explanation of that solution. And if Kadisa can do that without a computer, I want it from Kadisa. And if someone else can do it with a computer, the only thing that you have as an advantage is to make the answer as fast as possible and to know that the computer can give you a solution that you will defend. You can argue rationally and that's the important point. Am I clear? Eliza? Yes, you're clear. Okay, if I'm clear, what did I say? You were speaking about the fact that Kadisha didn't have the computer, but that she still be able to figure out how to um, compute the problem. Likewise with us, we have a computer. And the only thing that, that gives us the advantage is the fact that we are able to have a solution, that we are able to defend. Um, yeah, pretty much. Which means something important. If some of the cost changes, which cost can change and have impact to my problem and which cost can change and does not have impact to the problem. Did you hear it? And I want Isabel to write it down so we can send it whatever Isabel writes to everybody. Do I have a cost that can go up or can go down and does not have impact to my solution, does not change my solution? And do I have a cost that can have impact to my solution? These are my solutions that I have. What do I see here? Do I have any shipment from Fort Lauderdale to Albuquerque? Yes, from Fort Lauderdale to Albuquerque, I ship 200 units. Doesn't matter if I have it positive or negative with the supply. If this cost goes up or if this cost goes down, do I have any different solution or not? 
and what is the difference of the solution. And I want you to play. What do I want to do? I want Francisco to go on and make that 9-10 or that 9-8. And if you make it 10 or 8, you can see, do I have a different solution or not? If that becomes less expensive, do I have a solution that is different? Yes, Professor, I did it. And if we have a solution that is different, I want to compare the solution with the previous solution. Do I have a different solution? And the solution is here. What kind of shipments I have? The solution is not there how much is the cost. The solution is here. Do I ship anything differently? And Damien says, no, I ship exactly the same things from the same places. What is different? The difference of the cost. The cost is different because this particular shipment from Evansville to Boston, now from Fort Lauderdale to Albuquerque, this particular shipment, the exact same 200 units, now there are a dollar less. If that shipment is higher, do I have any different shipment? Yes, 4,100. I take it and I bring it here so I can compare it. Do I have any different shipment? The shipments are exactly the same as I had before. The only thing that is different is the cost. Therefore, if this cost goes up and down, has impact to my overall cost, but does not have impact to the shipments that I have. What is the important part? If that stays nine, but from the Evansville to Albuquerque becomes less, from Evansville to Albuquerque becomes less. From Evansville to Albuquerque, I have nothing. I have nothing. I have nothing. If from Evansville to Albuquerque becomes less, do I have any difference in my shipment? And if from Evansville to Albuquerque becomes significantly less, do I have any difference in my solution and you look at here and you say yeah now i have a different solution and i want you to tell me what is the difference can i tell professor do you see it here that i have all the solutions together well by turkey nothing was going on from evansville before evansville has a capacity of 300 units before Evansville was shipping things differently. Now everything that goes from Evansville to Albuquerque because the cost is so small, it goes there. That drives the cost overall down. But it's changing everything that I had before. And now I have a different solution. And I want you to tell me what is the difference. The difference is that now nothing goes from Des Moines to Albuquerque. Nothing. Before, from Des Moines, nothing was going to Boston. Now, Des Moines is shipping to Boston. But nothing is going to Cleveland. I look at the map. I see Des Moines, Cleveland, Boston. I see Cleveland closer to Des Moines than Boston. And I have a question, and I want an answer. And I want a real answer. And I don't take as an answer whatever Erica is going to tell me that is what the computer gave me.
And this is what, when I do the practice of that as a consultant, I face in the reality, but this is what I do not get whenever I see the books and whenever I go to classes and I see how people teach. What do I want to get? I want to be able to have an explanation of how the solution changes and how the solution has impact to my different cost estimates. In other words, if I look at all the costs here, I get a cost that is very low. And I have a question, is this reasonable or I should have doubts that that can be happened? Damian trying to compete with you to do anything as a proposal to get business out of me so he can hurt me. But is something that Damian says a proposal that he can have it as a sustainable alternative to what I would provide. And this is the reality of the business. And these are the problems I want you to be able to face. Because that happened since you gave me an estimate from Evansville to Alpakerki, the cost is as much as it from Evansville to Cleveland, or from Des Moines to Cleveland. And that needs to be justified. Can you justify? If you can be able to justify, and I can accept it, then I will see switch my preferences and switch the shipments. If not, then I need to know why not. And I am moving up. Professor, yes. I have a question. Um, so, Mathematica is set up to find the lowest cost of fish shipment, right? Yes. And, and every location requires a, an insane amount of unit to those locations. And I'm thinking once you switch the cost, um, I don't know, I think if you change the, um, the cost of the number of um, units, Per that um per that location then it goes to the next nearest um warehouse or that has that capacity to ship to that location so um, that's why um you change you have the, um, the difference in the numbers i think correct and mathematica is not the only thing that does it it tells the same thing lindo does the same thing all the software that they solve this type of problems this is what they do they do whatever you ask them to do and if you ask them to minimize cost, they minimize cost. It is you that you do the problem. What Mathematica does that the other software don't do, Mathematica can use the manipulate command here to play with these numbers automatically while all the other softwares don't do it automatically. You have to go on and make the changes as I made it right now. Okay. No, no, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking if, let's say from one location to another, it doesn't um, meet the requirements of units of shipment, would they, would they jump to the next um, warehouse to um, complete the um, number of units shipped? Yeah, the logic, the logic of thinking contains of what we described yesterday with Kadisha. I can't hear you now. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to be clarified when you change the number A to three, that it changed the, um, the outcome of the cost. So was it because of the number of units or the, the cost change? Because the cost change. And I want you to play around. Before you go to manipulate, I want you to go around and play with changing of these cost numbers because the cost can increase or decrease. I'm gonna do another case and that's gonna be the last that I will do. 
I go to the problem that I had before. I bring that to eight. This is what I have before. <coughs> I go on and I look at what is happening with the shipments. I have a shipment that it's here from Fort Lauderdale to Albuquerque, from Fort Lauderdale to Albuquerque, Fort Lauderdale to Albuquerque. I have no shipment here with the previous case. And this is the initial situation. What is happening? I have no shipment from Evansville to Albuquerque. From Evansville to Albuquerque, I have no shipment because the cost is relatively higher because to Albuquerque gets everything from Des Moines. If this number becomes competitive to Des Moines, five, then what is happening? Do we have anything that is different? Yeah. If something is going on, that I do not have a shipment here from Evansville to Cleveland, from Evansville to Cleveland. I do not have a shipment here. Can I have a shipment from Evansville to Cleveland? If this goes up, what is happening? If this goes up further, what is happening? Can I go on and change things? And the general rule is as the numbers here can change and can go up and down, you may have a different solution. And that is the solution that you have to go on and look at what is happening with the alternatives if your cost is changing. This is a what if analysis and sensitivity analysis based upon the objective function changes. And I go to the next case. And my next case is, if it is excess supply, if supply is excess, then demand. And here, I want you to pay attention to mainly two important points. What is the less than equal and what is the more than equal sign? So what do you have? You want to look for the cost and you want to have the lowest cost. Nothing changes from the previous case, but what is happening now? What is happening now? You increase your capacity in one factory. What factory increases the capacity? Is critically important. The text do not say, it, but the reality says the factory that has the lowest cost may increase the capacity. Do you have an alternative? What is going to happen if the capacity does not increase here, but the capacity can increase here? Or the capacity can increase here? And I want you to go on and play with this three different alternatives. The capacity can go up the same way into three different alternatives. If the capacity increases where the cost is lower, and this is what I want you to write down in your notes, if the capacity increases where the cost is lower, you have impact. If the capacity increases where the cost is higher, you do not have impact and I don't want you to trust me. I want to test everything. You go on and you do it. Your capacity changes. The capacity changes whenever you have the lowest cost. You put the case here. The capacity stays balanced. We solve it. The capacity stays balanced. We demand whatever we supply. We have the case here. And I look at the alternative. If the capacity increases 
when I have the lowest cost, do I have any significant impact? And the answer is yes, the cost goes down. But the cost goes down, why? My first question, and how? The second question, the capacity increases in this case here. We did it, we solved the problem. What is happening from Demois to Alpakerki, we increase the unit by 50 units. Nothing changes from Des Moines to Boston. Nothing changes from Des Moines to Cleveland. Nothing changes from Evansville to Albuquerque. Nothing changes from Evansville to Boston. Nothing changes from Evansville to Cleveland. Nothing changes from Fort Lauderdale to Cleveland. But something changes from Fort Lauderdale to Albuquerque. And now we ship 50 units less. We ship 50 units less here because we get 50 units more here. So what is the real result? The real case is from Fort Lauderdale to Albuquerque, we ship less. From Des Moines to Albuquerque, we ship more. I want to know why. I go on and look at this case because from the moist Alpakerki, the cost is cheaper than what is from Fort Lauderdale to Alpakerki. And as I increase the capacity here, things change. But if I increase the capacity here, things will not change. If I increase the capacity at the most expensive case, things will not change. will not change as a shipment, will not change as a cost. What is happening with the extra capacity? It goes not utilized. And I want you to learn lessons from that. If we increase the capacity, the capacity is more than the demand, we are not going to utilize all the capacity. Isabel, you write that down. If we increase the capacity and we can produce more than what we can demand, we are not going to utilize all the capacity. We'll utilize only whatever we demand. But if we increase the capacity where the cost is lower, we're going to have a different shipments, different distribution, because we are going to get it from where things are cheaper, not from where things are more expensive. Did I say anything that is not logical? Kadisa says no. And Kadisa does not need the computer to tell me that. Why Kadisa needs the computer? She needs the computer to make things fast and move on. If the capacity increases somewhere that the cost is in between the case, what is happening? Do I have a difference in the situation here? I go on and I look at my cases. Yeah, things are different. But now I have different in the shipment here. I have difference in the shipment here. But these differences do not have as much impact to the cost as they had before. Am I clear so I can move on? Eliza? Eliza? Yes, sir. What did we say? I honestly missed what you said this last time. Good, then I want to see you. All the time. You know why I don't trust myself or anybody else. If I see you, I know what you're doing. If I don't see you, you don't see anything. And that is the rule for everybody from now on. And every rule has exceptions. Stephanie is in a place that she cannot have a computer. She has her cell phone. The cell phone is not 
functioning enough, Stephanie, next day, tomorrow, needs to know what we do today. Otherwise, it's going to be count as an absent. And you can write in the rate my professor.com, this guy is really a jerk. Doesn't let me be off the hook. Someone put it in the past. And I go to the next case. The next case is the same practice, the same problem from the different point of view. And I don't have time to go on and explain it to the same detail. And the case case here is, is the excess demand. If I have excess demand and the demand goes up from where things are going on. And I would like to start from this point to play dirty games. And the dirty games that I said before is do you remember it guy the dirty games is how i use the inequalities and inequalities have a meaning but i cannot go more than a given level that's a restriction and i cannot go lower than a given requirement and supply is restricting us but demand is a requirement in other words eliza wants to pass the class and get a good grade or she wants to have a B or an A. And this is the way that she is putting the requirement. What is her level of the requirement? To pass the class or get B and above? And then I need to have a restriction. I'm offering the class. What is the minimum amount that I can offer you? Can I tell you what is in the book or I can tell you more than what it is in the book? Or do you want me to tell you only what is in the book? And if I go on away from being a teacher as being your consultant, would you pay me and Salah ask the same amount of money that someone else can ask you or I can ask you more? But if I can ask you for more money, then I can consult you for less time. And this is the main reason that we want to be educated. Is this clear guy? The way that these symbols are used are to specify what we restrict and what we require. And we cannot be able to play around. Now I'm going to play around. I go on and I have what is excess demand. Is this problem acceptable to you and guy would say okay solve it does it have a solution it gives me a solution is it something that makes sense and i want you to look at these equations and equalities etc and tell me what is this in plain English that it tells you. If these are if these are the supply inequalities, what these supply inequalities are telling you in plain English. Eliza. 
You say, I want to see them larger. I say, you are right. Can you tell me what all this Greek to you makes sense? Because I look at that stuff and I see only Greek things, unknown things to me. Can you tell me what these are telling you? Okay. Isn't that the supply, Professor, like for yeah. city? Yes. What kind of a supply is it? It's telling you where everything is going and how much it would, um, how much supply should go to Albuquerque, Boston, and. Now, uh, tell me something more. I want to know about more. Professor, Basile. another supply. Can I tell something? Yes, you can say something. The, it's telling me that supply is less than demand. So supply is uh, 600 and demand is 800. So demands exceed the supply. In this Esther, case. I didn't go to the demand yet. Okay, sorry. And I didn't go to the balanced or unbalanced problem. I went to the supply, what this is telling me. You are telling me that 100, 200, and 300 is 700. Well, 300, 250, and 200 is 750. You are telling me that 750 is more than 700. I don't want to focus on that stuff. I want you to something else. Fazila, what this is telling you? Um, it's showing the restrictions. Okay. Make it the problem smaller. What this is telling you? What this is telling you? Bazila. Um, is that the restrictions, the the inequalities? Uh, I want it better. Is it, is it telling you that? Sorry. Good. One person at the time, Fazila, try it again. I want it better. It is an equality. What kind of inequality? Um. Damian, can you help out? Um, the only thing that I'm I'm seeing, Professor, is that out of the moons, the supply is only a hundred. That's the only thing I'm really looking at. I don't know what else to see. Jerry, can you help out? Damien said something important. Take whatever he gave me and build upon that. Demoy said that the Damien said that the Demois factory does what? Jerry. I'm sorry, repeat that one more time. Demois Demois can ship to Albuquerque, Boston, and Cleveland. What? Um, well, based on that, they can ship to those locations. This is what I want you to tell you. What, what you Greater than or equal to 100 units. A little bit better. Uh, is it the total shipping that's going out of Des Moines? Uh, the total units is less than 100 that's being shipped out to the three locations? It doesn't say that it's less than. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the other way. Kadisa, Kadisa says that from Des Moines we ship at least 100 units. The lowest we can ship is 100. The lowest we can ship is 100 units. We can ship more than 100 units. But the lowest we can ship is 100 units. Is this valid? Is this valid? Eliza. Eliza, I don't see you. 
Liza, are you in my class? I need to see you. Is this valid? Is this valid? Fazila, what do you say? Um, I think it is. Since it's, since it, the, the minimum is 100, you can ship more than 100? Can I ship more than 100? More than that capacity that I have? In other words, if I want to define a factory, the factory is defined with a maximum capacity or with a minimum capacity? Minimum capacity. And this has minimum capacity. That means that can ship more than 100. When do we use that? When we want to focus on the minimum capacity. If I have that differently, maybe a different case. Same thing. What do I say here for Alpakerki? What do I say here for Alpakerki? You could say for Albuquerque, Albuquerque that the maximum capacity they can ship out is 300 units. Okay. Okay, what I have here, Tayo says that Albuquerque can get up to 300 units. Albuquerque can get up to 300 units. So the way that we model here the demand is to give higher level than demand the way that we model the supply is give the lowest limit of the supply when we get up to these units what do we say we say the same thing that i don't want to study for the class more than what it needs to take an a and after that if i take the a i don't want to get anything more just the A is going to be my maximum level. And then I go, having clarified these two points, I want to go on and make the addition. 700 units here and 750 units here. What it means? Kadisa says, Professor, that's obvious. What we have here is we have excess demand. We demand more than the supply, but we demand giving the maximum amount that we don't want anything more. We supply giving the lowest we can give and we can give more. What is gonna happen? We run the problem and we get the answer. Would I get the same answer if I have different cases? If I change one or more inequality signs, <clears throat> do I get the same answer? And the result is no. <coughs> and the result is no. And Jerry is gonna go back now, have lunch, and start playing around. Nothing is changing with the numbers. Nothing is changing with the numbers. But if nothing would change with the numbers, if one inequality changes direction, then what is happening to the solution? I get a different solution. No software allows you automatically to change the signs. All the software, like Mathematica, allow you to change the numbers. But in some cases that are extremely interesting, you want to change your way of thinking. Changing the way of thinking is your sign. And the sign says, up to 100 units or at least 100 units and i gave you now the terms that i translate 
at least 100 units. This is the solution. Up to 100 units. This is the solution here. And the solution is essentially different one from the other. Is this clear? I would like you to play around with this so you can be able to move to the next case because tomorrow I would like to talk about what is improper. Already I gave you an idea. You have a solution, but the solution is not proper. What is impossible? You do not get a solution. Everything is zero. And you want to play things around with the manipulate and how we will do that. Clear for today. Sorry, I took you 10 minutes more. It's 1254. The rule from now on is that if you are in class, I have to see you. If there is any specific reason, I need to know it in advance the same way that I knew it for Zaclean today. And I don't want to hide behind not being in camera. I want to see you all the time. So I will know that you follow or otherwise you are free not to follow. Clear? Good. Thank you for everything. Guy, let's talk in hangouts a little bit. Okay. And I'll see you tomorrow. I want you to play around with that stuff so you would become comfortable and familiar. I don't save any changes and I'm done.